नमस्कार सर हाँ नमस्कार नमस्कार चित्रा हाउ इज हेमंत नमस्कार सर नमस्कार सुनो नमस्कार नमस्कार अर्चना वो यूट्यूब वाला चैनल ओपन है ना यस सर यस सर बिकॉज हेलो अनुराग ऑलरेडी सर उस पर सत्रह लोगों ने ज्वाइन कर लिया है वेरी गुड वेरी गुड बिकॉज आई रोड टू ऑल लोकल चैप्टर्स कि वो जो कॉलेजेस और उसमें करें तो अभी धीरे धीरे सब ज्वाइन कर रहे हैं मुझे लगता है रिकॉर्ड भी कर रहे हैं ना डॉक्टर नीरज Yes, yes, madam. It is being recorded. And then, madam, today, today today there is a lecture by Dr. Takotkar also, which is overlapping. I did not know this, and uh, I came to know only yesterday. I felt so bad. No, it is overlapping. We can't do it. डॉक्टर घटक जब आप कहेंगे तो हम शुरू कर लेंगे मैडम इट इज मैडम इट इज इलेवन थर्टी शुड आई थिंक वी शुड स्टार्ट ठीक है आप हैं जी आप शुरू कर पाएंगे जी मैडम हाँ जी आई थिंक डॉक्टर नीरज Uh, from the nasi headquarter a uh, hearty welcome to all the distinguished fellows and members president and past president of this academy as well as our chief guest honorable professor r chidambaram sir uh, this lecture is the first lecture in the memory of our beloved honorable late professor mg k menon sir who was the pillar of this academy and especially when the academy uh, spirit was going down i must say that because after megdas sa in 1955 when the spirit was going down he was the person who took the courage to make this academy once again revived with his uh, noteworthy contributions for the science and technology in general and the academy in particular he became our president in 1987 and 88 and just after that he took the matter to the uh, department of science and technology and since then the department of science and technology has given its uh, uh, coverage and support to this academy for all its core activities we are very much grateful to our uh, past president late professor mgk menon sir and his contributions uh, is in a very simple words if i would i would like to say that steroid has been named in his uh, name goko menon so his contributions are enormous in the field of science and technology especially shaping the modern india and also the science uh, the science academy now this science academy is one of the three science academies of this country as well as it is a siro of the dsir this is all because professor menon and followed by him our several past president Two past presidents are sitting here: Professor J. P. Mitra, Professor Akhil Tyagi Ji, Professor Manju Sharma, Madam, and our present president, Professor Ajay Ghatak Sir, is also contributing. I'm uh, sorry, I'm I, I couldn't take name of Professor Ashok Mishra Ji. I'm very sorry, Professor Ashok Mishra Ji, also here. 
several past presidents are still contributing to the academy including professor kasturi rangan sir and others our fellows and members are also very distinguished and they contribute a lot to the development of the academy with the uh, help and with the network of the 21 chapters which this academy has uh, established in last few years so the role of professor mgk menon sir is in shaping this academy is great and we are not only uh, remembering him uh, because of this academy's role but his role for the whole of the country science and technology as well as for the national development through science and technology is noteworthy many four contributions are there i just can't take name but i think madam manju sharma ji certainly introduce him when she will uh, speak uh, before the chief guest uh, similarly uh, honorable professor r chidambaram sir is also an stalwart of the science and technology especially for the modern india his contributions enormous contributions and concept for the nuclear energy for our development through the nuclear energy and also through the directed basic research are some of the basic ideas which contributed a lot for the development of our science and technology so and he was also very close to our honorable professor menon sir so these two stalwarts when i am taking the name of both of them i would like to just from the academy side uh, i i would like to request all my uh, executives here who are gathered here just to uh, stand up to express their tribute to professor menon as well as express our profound regards to professor r chidambaram sir uh, just to start with and uh, keeping the memories alive i would like just to say two lines in hindi uh, diya jo zamane ko aapne diya jo zamane ko aapne uski koi misal nahi diya jo zamane ko aapne uski koi misal nahi zamana yaad karega sadiyon tak ye zamane ka vaada hai aap se with this i would like to request our general secretary out station professor paramjit khunara ji who is also a distinguished scientist in the field of plant molecular biology and also heading the department of plant molecular biology just few months ago and she is a fellow of all three national academies a distinguished scientist known world over i request you madam to please express a welcome address thank you very much dr neeraj Uh, a very pleasant good morning to everyone abhinandan aap sab ka aaj ke is samaroh mein bhag lene ka jo is room mein hai aur jo youtube se dekh rahe hain un sabhi ka bhi welcome to the first uh, professor menon lecture in the series organized by nasi in memory of the legendary professor mg menon a world renowned physicist and expert policy maker of this country on behalf of the national academy of sciences india and my own personal behalf it is my proud privilege to welcome each and every one of you to this special lecture series in his honor professor menon regarded as one of the principal architects of modern india he played a prominent role in development and implementation of science and technology in the country for nearly five decades a visionary who dreamt of modern india steeped in science and technology he personally nourished nurtured nasi to its present state he spearheaded the indian statistical institute and the indian space research organization as well professor menon was an elected fellow of the royal society and was bestowed upon with all the top honors of the country he served the country in various scientific administrative and leadership positions apart from him being the scientific advisor to the then prime minister he was also the chairman of the scientific advisory committee to the cabinet and later also became a member of the parliament in the rajya sabha it is thus a great privilege to welcome you all to this first lecture in a series dedicated to this stalwart of indian science a known institutional builder who better to kick start this special series than the padma vibhushan professor rajagopal ram chidambaram Professor Chidambaram is another leading experimentalist of a country 
who has managed to very efficiently amalgamate science with technology. He is considered as the key person in fast forwarding many strategic mission projects of our country, chief being, of course, the development of the nuclear capabilities of our country. Uh, his directed basic research approach has been key in making India self-reliant in the multifaceted area of nuclear energy. He not only led the Baba Atomic Research Center, but also, like Professor Menon, served as the principal scientific advisor to the government of India and later was the chairman of the scientific advisory committee to the cabinet as well. His close and personal proximity to Professor Menon makes him an ideal speaker to start this lecture series and we are indeed honored that he has so graciously agreed to deliver this first lecture and has chosen to speak on a very apt topic uh, for the general masters and everyone titled the many dimensions of nuclear energy a very warm welcome from all of us at nasi to you professor chidambaram we eagerly look forward to your address sir on behalf of nasi i would like to express our gratitude to dr manju sharma chairman of new initiatives and the distinguished nasi women scientist chair for her efforts in conceiving and materializing this madam your vision passion and insight is to be imbibed by one and all we look forward to your continued leadership and dedication to the cause of taking science to the society nasi is actually very fortunate to have the counsel and support of its several eminent past presidents particularly professor kasturi rangan professor kakodkar professor padmanabhan and also our present president professor patak for their invaluable suggestions and participations in various activities of nasi we immensely value your contributions and involvement in various programs of nasi i would thus like to extend a very warm welcome to each one of you besides the counsel and support of many past presidents nasi is fortunate to have amongst the audience today also several other illuminary uh, i see dr kamboj professor jp mittal professor ashok mishra professor tyagi uh, dr anurag sharma dr hemant machumdar and many others who are still joining here and who have all contributed uh, and have been associated with nasi in one or the other capacity and have often played multiple roles uh, we immensely appreciate your presence today in today's function so uh, lastly i would say on behalf of nasi i welcome each and every one of you and thank you very much for joining us in this very exciting morning thank you so much thank you so much madam thank you ma'am for extending a very cordial welcome to our guest and sharing your thoughts about the contribution of all the dignitaries present here thank you for sparing your time and being with us now as we just heard that the journey of this nasi could not have been possible but without the support of its past presidents who were the great legendaries and made lot of contributions to nasi professor mgk menon was one of those who contributed a lot and was globally recognized for his scientific prowess professional excellence and discipline he was not only a great scientist but also a very great human being who contributed a lot for the society with the intervention of science and technology and it was his vision that made nasi to reach a level where it stands today we are very much honored to have one of such past presidents honorable madam dr manju sharma ji who also made great contributions to nasi she is the driving force and the source of inspiration and motivation for all of us this lecture was initiated by honorable madam and we are very proud to have her here now i would like to request madam to please give 
an introductory remark and introduce the, our distinguished speaker of today's event, Padma Vibhushan, Honorable Madam, Honorable Professor R. Chidambaran Sir, who made noteworthy contributions in the field of nuclear science. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Archana. Honorable Professor Ghatak, President Nasi, very distinguished participants who have joined here, all the past presidents, Professor Aklesh Dyagi, Dr. Kabosh, Dr. Pittal, uh, Dr. Ashok Mishra, Dr. Anurag Sharma, the Vice President, and also many other fellows of the Academy. And a very respectful pronoun to Professor Chitambu. We really respect you, sir, and we respect late Professor M. G. K. Menon, who was the guiding force behind all the activities of this National Academy. In spite of his very busy schedule, he always could give some time to our Sir, it is very difficult for, for a small person like me to say something about the two legendary figures in science, the stalwarts of the country. I have truly looked at both of them as my teacher, guide, boss, and also sometimes a friend, probably Many other scientists in the country feel the same way. You know the reason why? Because both Professor Menon and Dr. Chitabram have very similar personality. And I will tell you a little later because I have looked at both of them. I've met both of them very closely. Whatever I could become or I am today is because of Professor Menon. On his birthday, I want to pay very rich tributes to him. I learned, uh, although he was a very strict uh, and a very rigorous uh, boss, I got all the training from him, meticulous work which he wanted me always to do in all, all respects, and also learned a lot about science management governance, full of compassion, meritorious performance, and to deal with all human beings with consideration, respect, and affection. And it is here I want to um, emphasize this point that this is one, these are the three qualities which I have observed both in Professor Menon and Professor Chidam. Absolutely, they are so considerate. They, I have seen both of them respect the seniors so much and they are full of affection for all the younger people. They have mentored a very large number of scientists in this country and these are the qualifications both of them have very much similar. Professor Menon being a physicist, had done very exciting research in the emerging field of fundamental particles with the use of newly developed uh, nuclear emulsion technique. Uh, Nasi brought out a prescript. I think uh, most of you have seen and some of the top scientists of this country uh, contributed in this, including Professor Chidambaram and Dr. Ashok Mishra, Dr. Kamboj and others. Uh, this was the very sim sim small tribute Nasi could pay to him for all what he did for Nasi over the period of uh, time when he had uh, uh, more or less uh, isolated himself from the government and was always involved more and more in academic ac activities of the country. Nasi has brought out in this book unparalleled contribution which he has made to Indian science. I don't want to describe it, but I'm sure Professor Chidamram and 
all other people, physicist, Dr. Ghatak, a very renowned physicist, every and Dr. Anurag Sharma, they will all know the con monumental contributions Sir had made and the Nobel laureates with whom he worked. And in spite of an invitation from University of Columbia to join them, he came back and joined Dr. Hobi Baba, whom he always called as his teacher, his guru, his friend, philosopher, and guide. Dr. Baba and Professor Menon worked very closely in TIFR and earlier days of science. I can still remember a photograph of Professor Menon where he's digging the foundation stone of uh, uh, one of the 24 towers of the ORT in Uti. And uh, uh, he, I think there was some delay and he says no. And he took the big power and he started digging the ground. What a contrast when he wrote. And I want to tell all of you that uh, he was very deeply involved in every activity of NASA. And we were establishing Ganga Garden. And uh, I was uh, trying to organize the framework and the pattern on which we are going to set up the gallery. And we were all having a meeting with him. And uh, of course, uh, Neeraj is always there. Neeraj, you will always recall, remember that uh, we, when we sat in the conference hall. And I asked Professor Menon, and please, uh, you won't believe this. I asked him, sir, I want to have a Ganga Stuti in front of the gallery as soon as the students and other people enter. And believe me, in 10 minutes, he just sat there, took a pen and pencil, and in 10 minutes, he, he just pinned down the university uh, Stuti. Devi Sureshwari Bhagwati Gange, Trivuan Dharani Karal Gange. This is the, his handwriting I have put reproduced it in this fresh script. Uh, within 10 minutes, sir was uh, gave, gave me the cheat and said, you can use this istuti. And uh, there it was in the gallery. What I learned from him, very briefly, I want to say that the accuracy in consideration of every program he started, including NASI, biotechnology department, in DST, I, I had the opportunity of starting many programs with him. But he was so accurate, precise, and always remembered the culture, the tradition, the importance of the program on the society. This is what I have heard from him. That always anything you do, A, you bring it to a logical conclusion. B, it must have an impact on the society. And certainly, he loved the scientific community of this country. So many times he told me uh, his experience about uh, uh, many, many senior people uh, who, who, who he, were, he was associated. And he said, I just like them all. Uh, I must share one thing about Professor Menon. Never did he say a wrong word about anybody. Never. On his birthday, I can swear for this and say that Professor Menon would never do uh, say wrong things about anybody. And he always told me, brain is your bank. Why do you have to keep uh, these wrong things in your bank? Keep all the gold, the jewel, the wealth, and not the uh, things which are of no use to anybody. That was his uh, great quality. Uh, Nasi owes so much to him, it is impossible to describe in such a short time. Uh, monumental contributions in every respect in completely transforming Nasi. I won't say what Nasi was before Professor Menon and what Nasi is today. All of you can see, sir. What Nasi is today is because of Professor Menon and his contributions and everything, the building of NASI. We owe that building to Sir because he sat down uh, so carefully and everything he planned for the 
building and worked so hard to get the piece of land, to get the money from DST to construct that building. And I hope uh, uh, all of us, all the past presidents, all the fellows of NASI, plus the executives of the NASI, please never forget his contribution and always follow the guidelines which he gave. Don't just uh, take back NASI to the old days before Professor Ben. Keep going forward, keep going forward. That's what I always feel about NASI. So uh, I want to come back to uh, Professor Chidambaram, but uh, as I said, uh, as I feel that uh, uh, so much has been already said by Dr. Kurana, and also we have a very nice booklet. Second thing, uh, it is very uh, silly on my part to talk about Professor Chidambaram. Is there anybody in this uh, whole gathering who doesn't know him, his contributions? In very closely, everybody understands what he has done for the country. There is something so wonderful, so very affectionate about his scholarly personality. As I said, he and Professor Menon resemble so much. You know, one automatically gets attracted towards him and you want to respect him. You really want to care for him. That is the personality. Dr. Chidambaram is a par excellent physicist. He contributed to the development of uh, nuclear weapons in the country. And, uh, and also he was responsible for conduct when the, uh, in 1974, the Pokhran experiment was conducted and later on in second one in May, 1998. Both of them, uh, Professor Chidambaram was the guide and he really was behind the scene for everything. Uh, I have to share a, a real secret uh, with all of you. Uh, when uh, the second uh, Pokhran experiment was done, and uh, I was also a secretary at that time, and uh, uh, I was working very closely for many things with uh, the Prime Minister. And when, after this whole ex Pokhran was done, and in just in a few days, I happened to meet the Prime Minister, and something came up about uh, the Pokhran experiment. And suddenly, the Prime Minister very cheerfully said, Chidamaram Saab to Kamal ke insan. What a gentleman he is. So these are the exact words uh, Adalji used for you uh, at that time. Kamal ke insan. Itne, uh, Key personality, and then he for five minutes he went on describing uh, Professor Chidambara. Imagine Prime Minister of India saying like that, and that also Atal Bihari Vajpayee about a personality like Professor Chidambara. India is really very, very, very proud to have him uh, in this position, and also I'm sure all of you realize the seriousness the security angle of all the technologies, all the scientific work, and all the uh, overall guidance he has given to atomic energy. He is largely responsible for creating the self-reliant indigenous base of atomic energy in this country. From the day one, uh, we have seen how he has contributed and he has built one by one each program of atomic energy. I don't think there can be anybody better than Professor Chidambaram to deliver the first lecture of uh, Professor M.G.K. Merit series. I met him first in Vigyan Parishad in Alhabad. Sir, you remember that, Professor Chidambaram? And there he had come, gone to inaugurate some program and uh, Thereafter, I returned with him in the train uh, through, with, in Prayagraj. And during the way, uh, we discussed a lot of science. And one very brilliant uh, idea which he was explaining to me is, I don't know whether, sir, you remember, interface between physical and biological sciences. He, ex he was explaining to me. For almost an hour, we had this discussion. 
and this motivated me to come back and develop so many of the programs in the country not only one but so many programs of the department of biotechnology of nasi of other institutions this was always in my mind what i had discussed with him and uh, sir uh, dr sitamram will be happy to know that the forthcoming annual session of the academy and the symposium which we are going to have is on this very subject and we have requested you to be the plenary speaker there interface between physical and biological sciences and uh, we the council unanimously agreed to have this subject and uh, we know that uh, how relevant it is when we are talking of atmanirbhar bharat all the time and uh, we want to contribute through science and technology to the overall rapid development of this country so uh, the last thing i want to say is uh, Professor how I don't know how to express my gratefulness and my thanks to you. Uh, the moment I called you, and immediately you agreed, and then within ten minutes, you know, Neeraj must be remembering. He called me back and said, "I'm giving you the time." So that is the promptness he has in everything he does. That is what Professor Chidambaram is, and the National Academy of Sciences is very, very fortunate to have him. As a first speaker of the series, the two legendary figures of this country both contributed so much for the development and welfare of the country, and for the science and for the science scientific community. I must emphasize that point. They have not only done excellent science; they have also helped the scientific community of this country to proceed further. And, uh, sir, once again. Uh, very respectful welcome to you and thank you so much for coming and warm welcome to all the distinguished uh, participants in this lecture thank you thank you, thank you madam uh, very humbly we would like to request and pay our regards to honorable professor chidambaram and uh, and we request to please uh, speak few words in the memory of professor menon as well as on your uh, lecture sir Thank you, sir. Thank you, Professor Manju Sharma, Professor Ajay Ghatak, Professor Paramjit Khurana, Professor Satya Dev, other past presidents of NASI, fellows of NASI, distinguished colleagues and friends. Firstly, I am very grateful to uh, Dr. Manju Sharma for the kind introduction, and and in fact for the invitation. It's a privilege to come and give this talk on Professor Menon, and and she has given an excellent background about the personality and the contributions of Professor M. G. K. Menon. Now, Professor M. G. K. Menon, as well, of course, he was associated with uh, so many organizations, but his basic affiliation was with the Tata Institute of Fundamental Research. And as you know, Baba started the TAFR so that one day it becomes the fountainhead of the nuclear program in the country. And uh, since TAFR and nuclear are so closely connected, I thought I would choose the topic of my talk as many dimensions of uh, of nuclear. I think I'll, uh, uh, Manjuji, I will start my PowerPoint presentation. Okay. Yeah. Great. Are you able to see the slides now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Dr. Katak, you are able to see. Okay. See, see, Professor M. G. K. Menon joined TFR in 1955, and he became its director in 1966. At this young age of uh, 38, of course, he has done his uh, PhD in the University of Bristol, as uh, Manduji said, under the guidance of uh, Powell, 
And Professor Menon was a brilliant physicist. He undertook experiments with cosmic rays and study the properties of fundamental particles. Baba himself was a theoretical high energy physicist. You know, there is something electron positron scattering called Baba scattering. But he was a theoretician. And Menon, as a physicist, was an experimentalist. And in the very early days, he was involved in setting up balloon flight experiments. I remember talking when I was in Japan, talking to some Japanese scientists. They were completely, I mean, uh, impressed by the kind of experiments Professor Menon was doing. And also the advantage was uh, we, are very, we are a tropical country very near the equator. And they were, they used to come here to get the results of these uh, balloon flight experiments. And of course, he also did this uh, deep underground experiments, lifetime was a proton, polar gold fields. And he was, basic interest was studying cosmic ray neutrinos. Shanti Zuru Bhatnagar Award, Abdus Salam Award, and Padma Vibhushan, you all heard about this. And as has been mentioned, he has occupied many prominent positions in Indian science. Chairman of ISRO, Vice President CSIR. And when Baba created INCOSPAR, Indian National Committee for Space Research, in 1962 under Vikram Sarabhai, this part, INCOSPAR was part of AIFR, whose director at that time was MGK Menon, as uh, Dr. Manju Sharma mentioned, he has been scientific advisor to the PM, and also then the Minister of State for Science, Technology, and Education. So I, this is Amrutotsav, 75th anniversary of Indian independence, and if, and maybe a couple of weeks back, I gave this talk in the Humay Baba. A national Institute about India's achievements, science and technology. Of course, we had the ancient India, Aryabhatta and Bhaskaracharya, and mathematics, astronomy. But then, during the centuries of occupation and colonization by foreign countries, Indian science went into hibernation and could not contribute to or benefit from the Industrial Revolution. India's renaissance in modern science and technology took place in the first half of the 20th century. Through the efforts of C.V. Raman, basic research, Homi Baba, technology development and others, and this continued after independence. Well, there were many others during that period. Srinivas Ramanujan, a mathematical genius. <laughs> the 4,000 theorems in his so called notebooks given without proof was, as Hadi says, they looked at with awe oh, by the mathematicians. And many other mathematicians say thanks very much to Ramanujan for not giving the proofs because they are still working out the proofs of those theorems. And none of those theorems have turned out to be wrong. Jagadish Chandra Bose, first to produce millimeter length radio waves, study their transmission and interception, not Marconi. Satyendranath Bose, Bose Einstein statistics. You know, there are only two kinds of particles, fundamental particles. Spin half, named after Fermi, fermions. Spin zero or integral named after Bose, bosons. Higgs boson is a missing particle found in the Large Hadron Collider. Name. That's a boson. And we have had famous astrophysicist Meghnath Saha, known for his ionization equation. In fact, in my work in high pressure physics, I used Saha's ionization equation. Of course, people are a little surprised. That is for very dilute atmospheres, astrophysical atmospheres. But then we played around with the 
ionization potentials. Prabhu Lichandrare, often referred to as the father of modern chemistry, Mahalanobis, pioneer in statistical science, Bhatnaga, who set up the chain of industry oriented labs in India, and among engineers, Moksha Gundam, Vishweshwaraya, considered the greatest engineer. He was a civil engineer in India's studio. In fact, just like Science Day, Mathematics Day, Technology Day, we celebrate Engineers Day, birthday of Vishweshwaraya. Professor M. G. K. Menon belonged to the next generation. Missionary founder of the nuclear program, Homi Baba, as I said, kick started it by establishing the AFR, whose reins were taken over by Menon after Baba. But even before that, as men, as Baba became progressively more involved in the nuclear program, Menon was more or less the de facto director of TFR. And a great deal of the work related to TFR was being done by him. You know, I've always said Homi Baba, greatness about Homi Baba was, you know, many leaders, when they pass away, the, the systems they have created collapse. Not in the case of Homi Bhabha, because he created a leadership swarm around it. And uh, MJK Menon was a prominent member of this, Raja Ramana. So many other, in fact, many of them came to atomic energy establishment from there, as it used to be called before it was named, renamed after Bhabha. They all came from TF, several of them. That's why the program started by Baba did not lose momentum after his tragic death in an air crash. The institutions which have been involved with has been mentioned, apart from TFR, ISRO, DRDO, also you know, Nasi was obviously a prominent one been mentioned by both the president, president, and the past president. And as Professor Ajay Ghatak says, and he said here also, and Dr. Manju Sharma also said, Professor Menon's initiatives as vision and vision as president of NASI have led to a sharp growth of academies activities in the past 30 years. Dimensions of nuclear energy. Nuclear is, of course, electricity, nuclear power. Nuclear is also weapons. But nuclear is way beyond these, with applications in medicine, agriculture, industry, societal benefits, spin offs of the nuclear program, sometimes visible, sometimes invisible. High precision engineering brought in by the Department of Atomic Energy. BHL Trichy told me, you have got a welding institute, that precision welding came into the country because of the nuclear program. In short, there is no field, scientific, technological, or societal, which is today, will be tomorrow untouched by nuclear. Department of Atomic Energy also uniquely positioned you know, BARC, for example, has a unique uh, capabilities, both in applied physics and engineering. They are the only organizations at the moment who can build advanced research facilities. Because you can build big systems, missiles, space launch vehicles. But the advanced research facilities in the country, like research reactors, particle accelerators, synchrotron radiation source, which is there in indoor. They've all been built by the Department of Atomic Energy. And also, of course, DAE encourages, once you have the facility, the basic, large, basic research communities, which are associated with them, they are also there in these institutions. India for dreams, particularly the young guys in the audience, economically developed. For us, the sustainable development goals the United Nations came up with 1915, 17 goals. They're only the beginning. 
we want to become india to become a developed country and then a knowledge economy and i'm sure mgk also wanted the same thing the shortest possible time the dream of an india where the human development index is high say among the top 10 countries in the world scientifically advanced excellence in basic research including what in a current science paper 2007 i have called directed basic research directed basic research is not applied research this is basic research but with the perspective it could be based on technology foresight what industry or society or our strategic programs need in the long term basic research keeping a long term perspective in mind that's what i call directed basic research directed basic research is not a substitute for self directed basic research highest intellects in a country must be allowed to fundamental problems of their choice basic research is a fundamental necessity in any civilized country then we want excellence in applied research technology development r and d led innovation backed by high quality manufacturing skills generation of knowledge is not enough alone we must use technology that's why manufacturing comes in fact we must have the ability if you are to become a knowledge economy to appropriate knowledge generated in other countries derive value from them that's what those countries have been doing and we also need an appetite for risk taking you know this is a very nice book by john brockman this idea brilliant of course this counterpart book says this idea must be abandoned but this idea is brilliant in that phil rosenweis says when it comes to technological breakthroughs or launching new products is better to act and fail than fail to act i'll repeat this towards the end of my talk even our abhijit banerjee nobel laureate in economics was giving a talk showing slides one slide was on the risk and property poverty trap risk and poverty trap and he says and i quote Poor people take up low risk, low return projects because they fear the risk. Because something goes wrong, they are worse off than before. So they remain poor. The same thing is true for research. You want high quality research, you have to take risks. If you don't take risks, of course you will get results, and even get your papers published. Not be frustrated. And of we must be militarily strong the ability to fight and win conventional wars and our armed forces are capable of that fresh perpetrators of low intensity conflicts our forces are capable of that and with the capability of nuclear deterrence which we now have and we need leaders leaders like homi bhaba m k mena the india's three stage program is well known there are many of you first stage heavy water reactors first stage heavy water reactors as you could start off with natural uranium we had uranium mines so baba went for this and this people who are his advisors so as you would have had to build an enrichment plant heavy water reactors can do canadian type of reactors they were imported 220 megawatt reactors and you produce plutonium in those reactors then you go to the next generation stage 2 plutonium fuel fast breeder reactors like the ones coming up in kalpaka you have plenty of thorium thorium is not fissile but exposed thorium in fast breeder reactors to generate uranium 232 better to do it there than in thermal reactors of the cross section reasons and then you can finally go into thorium 
uranium 233 cycle stage one stage two phase three of course we can have additionalities like we have the light water reactors like Kuran Kulam, which we are building with Russian collaboration, BVRE type of reactors. We are one of the few countries in the world which have comprehensive capabilities with a close nuclear fuel cycle. You make your reactors LWR or PHWR, and then throw away the fuel stuff, fuel as waste. That's called the open fuel cycle. Makes no sense. Rather well, valuable material that plutonium. Take up the plutonium and build new kinds of reactors, then for the closing the nuclear fuel cycle. And then if we put thorium and use thorium uranium 233, it is closing the nuclear cycle, including thorium. Now, once and I director general of IAEA Mohammed El Barade, we were discussing former director general. And I told him the importance of closing the nuclear fuel cycle. Because you know, if you close with the second stage using plutonium, as we are doing, the same uranium will give you 50 times more power. You close it with thorium, same uranium will give you 600 times more power. And Mohammed asked me that can we then say nuclear can then become renewable energy? I told him, let us be modest, we will say near renewable energy. Of course, even in PHWRs, what was imported was 220 megawatts, then 540, now 700 has been indigenously designed, and the government, present government has sanctioned 10 700 megawatt reactors in a fleet mode. So you give us one by one, we have difficulty in inducing industry to make the components. Fleet more, they know there's going to be continuous orders. Because a lot of industries you we rely on in our, for our nuclear program. 6,780 megawatts. There's the reactors in our operation. You know, we take care of the environment. Today, environment is a very big issue. And climate change, of course, globally is an important. But even locally. Deforestation is not good for the environment. In fact, plant forests forest, convert carbon dioxide into oxygen. Look at these reactors in Kaiga. Every tree we cut, we plant 10 more trees. And this is what this is the kind of site you will find every one of our reactor, reactor plants. And the environment is good for nature. Look at this slide in Kalpakam. Just now a book has come, our feathered friend. Look at the beautiful birds, they come. Birds and butterflies are indicators of ecosystem health. Look at this. Variety of birds, kingfisher, herons, common moorhen. Projects under construction. Of course, we will, we will be very happy to build more. Funding is a problem, but as you can see here, nuclear is going to become more and more important in the future. The IPCC's fifth assessment report, International Panel on Climate Change. So there are some climate skeptics. You know, there is a term called post-truth. Post-truth. Oxford Dictionary introduces such a word every year. 2016, they introduced. Post truth is an attitude in which they say, Look, I've made up my mind. Don't confuse me with scientific evidence. Climate skeptics are like that. So much evidence is there. Forming of the climate system is unequivocal. From the time of the Industrial Revolution to the early part of this decade, Atmosphere and oceans have warmed up by one degree. Amounts of snow and ice have diminished. Sea level has risen. Goes on like this Hindu question. 35% of the glaciers will melt off. And then, how to mitigate? Because carbon dioxide is one of the big greenhouse gases coming out from power production by burning fossil fuels. Key measures 
to achieve mitigation goals include development of renewable energy of course very important for us renewable energy nuclear carbon capture and storage including bioenergy with carbon dioxide capture but you know whatever we say next 20 years we are going to burn coal there's no other alternative new plants are going to be built that's why when i was a psa we started the program advanced ultra supercritical thermal plant created an r and d group in uh, our psa's office but the project was given to the ministry of heavy industry the prime minister's office gave a quite a good bit of funding for this 1500 crores because nobody has built such a plant so far and most of the turbines and others they are built in this country are based on technology transfer this is the first time because this technology is not available anywhere we are designing everything from scratch just before i go to that stanford university study shows that short term cold countries like norway and sweden has benefited you now once the ice melts new resources become available to them whereas warm countries like india and nigeria that have studied the economy of two countries this and their economic growth has dragged down but in the long term all countries are going to suffer the sea level rises and of course this sixth assessment report has come out 9th august but mainly the conclusions remain the same of course they want to at that time one degree we have already risen global temperature rise global warming originally they wanted to limit it to 2 degrees now the feeling is coming that 2 degrees is also lead very serious bring it down to 1.5 and this sixth assessment report deals in detail with the physical science aspects of climate change renewable energy absolutely important for us no question present situation this is the end of july last last that last month we have 100000 megawatts of installed capacity of renewable energy fourth in the world of course we have got and by the way the india's largest floating solar plant 25 megawatt is installed in andhra last week wind small hydro biomass and in the last 7 years three times increased in installed capacity so the problem is so we have gone for renewable energy in a big way solar even though some of the best quads is available in andhra they have not gone into completing the supply chain polysilicon wafers ingots much of it is put it down and the government is now trying to ramp up all these domestic manufacturing the pali have got active research programs in the country national center for photovoltaic research iit bombay started by professor user wasi of course you know the problem is solar and wind is intermittency so there are ways of uh, you have to store it either store it put it in batteries release on demand or you can hybridize it with hydro coal and csir has a major program sikri karakuri central for electro chemical research institute on lithium ion batteries they are setting up a 100 crore plant in near chennai this is the advanced ultra supercritical thermal plant and uh, you know the problem is in the case of missiles nuclear power plants or launch vehicles all the component competencies exist within the mission oriented agencies but in many of these areas we don't have them and one of the major issues in india is how to synergize competencies existing in various organizations for this for example no single organization which has got 
comprehensive capabilities. So we brought in three organizations. BHEF, the best makers of power engineering equipment. NTPC, who are the best power utility in India. And Indira Gandhi Center for Atomic Research. They are the best in materials. Because fast neutrons provide a very unfriendly environment. So we brought the two, three of them together. And from our office, we had made the former director of IGK, Chetal, as the leader of this group, project director. And this has been completed in March this year. As you can see, but this is for an 800 megawatt plant. State of art design for the first time for the steam turbine, rotor encasing economics, and heaviest casting so far made in nickel base alloys. Nuclear energy. Look at the comments of Yuki Amano, former director general of IAEA. He says, India is at the forefront of technology development in the nuclear sector, not least in the area of fast reactors and the related fuel cycles. But he realized he was referring to a three stage program. Now, you know, whether it's your new car or any other machinery in your house or Nuclear reactor. Safety and reliability go together. When you drive your car, the clutch doesn't bother you, the brake doesn't bother you. Very likely you'll never get into an accident. Same thing with a nuclear reactor. So a measure of safety is reliability. And look at this. On in December 2018, the indigenously built unit owner, the Kaizap pressurized heavy water nuclear power station, Karnataka, broke the world record for continuous operation, 941 days, which was held till then by UK reactor. Of course, they went on for some more time until they had to shut it for a maintenance. Continuing with this trend, NAPS2, 852 days of continuous operation. And even in these COVID times, when many of the industries are lagging behind, Takara Par 3, the 700 megawatt pressurized heavy water reactor, the indigenously designed one, was synchronized with the grid, power grid, on 10th January 2021. That's this month. Then, of course, Pokhran, as you all know, you've seen this. Many of you have seen these tests, five tests, craters which have been produced there. See, fission device. This is a very advanced fission device. So the fusion boosted fission device. Because, you know, if you want to make a fission device, which is always the first stage of a thermonuclear device, make it more compact by fusion boosting. 45 kiloton could have gone up to 200, no problem at all. But the shaft was already done. They had been dug for many years, waiting. We were waiting and improving the designs waiting for clearance to come. And the maximum we could have tested there are 45 kiloton. You know, if you look at the phenomenology of an underground nuclear explosion, there are cracks around the short point. And when the shock wave comes and hits the ground, comes as a compressive wave, goes back as a rarefaction wave, and the ground lifts, cracks develop from there down. If those cracks and the shaft and the cracks around the short point meet, then there is venting of radioactive. Knowing the geology of the Pokhran site, Dr. Sitka had calculated that absolute safety for the depth that we had, 45 kiloton is the maximum, so we tailored it to 45 kiloton. Of course, I have written an article in this journal, in UK journal, international journal, scientific aspects. Pokhran test. Anybody is interested, you can look at more of this. Of course, you know, if you want, this is not one technology, nuclear weapon technology. Of course, it is reactor physics and neutron kinetics, but it is shockwave physics. And there we had the collaboration of the DRDO lab in Chandigarh, Terminal Ballistics Research Lab, Condensed Matter Physics, Equation of State. Equation of state of plutonium. How does 
the density of plutonium change with shock pressure and that Fugonio is the classified one but then we calculated it even those days using Birchmur-Nagan equation of state but now of course we have got first principle calculator yeah, absolutely fits what we had done in 74 by 98 we had supercomputers and make these uh, to make these calculations we published this paper on thorium this is what a example of directed basic research you want it for plutonium but if you because it's five electrons are involved so five like f electron metal both of them thorium and plutonium and we could show this is the first time the isotherm is shown by a dotted line and this this experimental data they put only spd the isotherm is shown by a dotted line experimental data was given here and what we calculated is that means we can do it for thorium perfectly we can do it for plutonium and of course you know one of the things with they put it on the technology control regime is supercomputers. Computers are not available, made available to India. That is when, when, you know, fortunately at that time, when I was director of physics group, computer division was part of physics group. And we started a parallel processing computer program. Because now there is a supercomputing mission. Many supercomputers are imported. But this one, Anupam series of supercomputers are built in years. And right now it has gone to 1.3, it has gone to more than that. It's like by 2019, it had gone to 1.4 petaflops, gigaflops, teraflops, petaflops. And now it has two, more than two. You know, this is a Venn diagram showing sharing historical sharing of nuclear weapons knowledge published soon after our 98 test shows how u.s transferred weapons knowledge to france france to israel israel to south africa russia to china china to pakistan and you see india stands alone that means they acknowledged that we don't didn't we had enough experts in practically every area as i told you is a multidisciplinary problem and all those expertise and capabilities and everything knowledge and design with well, we had it in india you know there were many economists who predicted you do this test they did the same thing in 74 that the whole sanctions will come on india and the economy will collapse. I'm showing you the foreign exchange reserves of India. May 98. Not even a blip in the rise in foreign exchange reserves. In fact, one economist told me, because of your Pokhran test, many countries got convinced about India's technological capability and our exports have increased. Today, the foreign exchange reserves are more than 600 billion. National development, national security. The 1999 IDOMA lecture, I said national development and national security are two sides of the same coin. Development without security is vulnerable. Security without Development is, of course, meaningless. The examples of both kinds of countries among around the political landscape. The greatest advantage of recognized strength is that you don't have to use it. That is the principle behind nuclear deterrent. The greatest disadvantage of perceived weakness is that your enemy may get adventurous. Look at other applications of sustainable nuclear application, sustainable development. We are able to export mangoes to the US, Alfonso mangoes, because you can delay the ripening. Number of seeds which have been special property, increased productivity, increased pest resistance. 
all of them are, are cleared by the varieties release program. We make sure the mutation is mutation is stable for seven generations. And more than 50 varieties of crops have been released by the BRC. What resource management? Recharging of aquifers in Uttarakhand. Medical diagnosis. If you have a thyroid complaint, drink a glass of water containing a radioactive iodine. You can take a lung scan. Technetium, you can take a lung scan. So there are numerous apl applications of this. Of course, you must go in for international scientific cooperation. But today in India, wants international scientific cooperation on an equal partner basis. Look at Professor Menon. I mentioned to you about his collaboration on cosmic ray experiment, balloon experiment. That was an equal partner basis. In fact, we were the leaders in that. Japanese were the minor partners. Those experiments also this pioneering experiment to try to look at the lifetime of the proton in the collar gold gold mines, collar gold mines. Large Hadron Collider, Higgs boson. You know, there's a tunnel 100 meters below the ground in Geneva. Sun, center of European nuclear research. Where protons are moving in opposite directions. 26 kilometers circumference. They are moving at at least 4 tera electron volt. Once in a while, they are brought together. Collide. When they collide, energy disappears, particles are produced. You have to apply E is equal to mc square, good old Einstein equation in reverse. And if they wanted to see the Higgs boson, they knew which is 130, 150 times the mass of the proton. They had to go. You know, the, the, those protons are bent by dipole magnets, but they are focused by sextipole magnets. And all these 1800 plus sextipole magnets, octopole magnets, decapole magnets were supplied by India, $40 million worth of these magnets. In fact, when I was chairman AEC, I signed this agreement. This is what I mean by an equal partnership. And also, experiment, CMS, the compact muon solenoid in which JFR is a partner. Because, you know, after the time of uh, NN, High energy particle physics is very strong in uh, TIFR. And this was a, between uh, high energy particle physics, accelerator physics, you know, origin of the universe kind of thing. And those data, because they were part of this equipment, compact CMS, was built by, by TIFR, which is at least a major, they were the leaders. That data comes through the National Knowledge Network directly to TFR. And uh, they were a big partner. Higgs boson, the first signatures of the Higgs boson came from the CMS. CMS. Similarly, the ETA, International Thermonuclear Reactor, India is one of the major fusion reactor. And this huge cryostat designed by the Institute of Plasma Research, built by LNT Hazira. In which the whole tokamak will be housed. The biggest cryostat ever built in the world, 30 meters in diameter, 30 meters in height. This base of this has already been installed in France. Artificial intelligence, machine learning, everywhere is used from commerce to cybersecurity. It's also used in nuclear expert systems. Expert systems are based on artificial intelligence. Of course, based on experience. But this A gives you properly directed intelligence. And you know the decision, no, the final decision on shutting down a reactor, only a human can make. This is the regulation, Atomic Energy Regulatory Board. But it is a support system, decision support system. Symptoms based intervention guideline management system, false alarm suppression, prognostics of plant equipment, and then of course robotics for surveillance. Robotics are actually AI systems. 
technology is power. You know, the famous futurologist, Alvin Toffler, said, yesterday violence was power. Today wealth is power. And tomorrow knowledge will be power. Why did he say that? Whoever had the best technology for inflicting violence was the most powerful. Nuclear violence holds also today. Wealth is power. Whoever had the best technology, who could develop the technology, convert knowledge into technology, he became more powerful. For knowledge itself leads to technology. I paraphrase Alvin Toffler to say technology is power. All the sources of power Toffler mentions have their foundations in technology. That's why countries and nations try to dominate technology. They use two mechanisms, intellectual property rights and technology control regimes. And as Director Bach, Atman Nirbharta, we talk about Atman Nirbharta. Atman Nirbharta does not mean you have to do everything yourself. If you build a complex system consisting of many subsystems, if, a, if, if a subsystem is available to you from outside, from a reliable source, go ahead and use it. All countries do that. But if anything is denied to you, including the proverbial wheel, you must have the capability to do it yourself. That's why the director bar I define self-reliance not as trying to do everything yourself, but as immunity against technology denial. The nuclear program has achieved this. And one of the consequences of the Indo-US agreement was they helped us to change the NSG guidelines which had been revised specifically for India. Now we can import equipment. Of course, those equipment, we have got enough of our own for our whatever purpose. If you want India to be a global technology leader, India should be in the forefront in creating IPRs and make itself immune to technology control regimes in all high technology fields like you have done in nuclear. And also, like in nuclear, India should have the ambition to be the first introducer of new advanced technology. I talked to you about the advantage of risk taking. I've said before, proven technologies are often a synonym for obsolete technologies. More you prove them, the more obsolete. It. Of course, established technologies you can go on continuously continuously improving. Now I come to my last slide, including remarks. Well, Professor M.G. Kimmanan was a very gracious and generous person. I know it's from personal experience. Also a very perceptive person. You know, I've talked so much of technology. Look, when Professor Menon was introducing me to somebody, he told me, don't associate Chidambaram only with nuclear weapons. His main interest and core competence is in basic research in crystallography and high pressure physics. Of course, in conclusion, let me say, apart from his excellent contributions in basic research, very few leading scientists have had extensive vision and wide range of interests with policy impact, science and technology is Professor M. G. K. Menon. Thank you very much. I think we should give a standing ovation to his lecture. <laughs> Thank you very much, Professor Manju Sharma. Thank you very much. Hi, Dr. Ghatak. Uh, I think that listening to Professor Chitambram and the two patriots about whom we have discussed today, we should end up this uh, program with a national anthem because of the 75th anniversary we are celebrating. Is that okay? Yes, madam. 
नीरज यस मैडम यस मैडम वील डू Yes, madam. That will be done in the end of the program. We will do that. In the end of the program, we will do that. National anthem. Okay. And okay. Just, just just now, there are two two more present parts. The one is the uh, presidential remarks on the address of Honorable Professor Chidambaram, and after okay. that, felicitation and the vote of thanks. Just after the vote of thanks, we will do the national anthem. Uh, Akshana ji, over to Akshana ji. so we heard a very informative talk from honorable professor chidambaram sir thank you so much sir for sharing your valuable insight on the subject highlighting the contributions of great mathematicians and astronomers like aryabhatta ramanujan bhaskaracharya and also professor satyendra bose and dr p s ray and most importantly the contribution of late professor n g k menon sir In, uh, towards the progress of the National Academy of Sciences India, and also some other aspects related to the nuclear energy, highlighting the indigenous three-stage nuclear program that was initiated by Homi Bhabha and J. Jawaharlal Nehru in 1950. Concept of renewable and nuclear energy, including the bio energy, and you have rightly said that science and technology. is a must for a country to grow and for this we must have a balance a integration of the three aspects of nuclear energy that is uh, environmental economic and social because in a country like india where we have large number of population and uh, with the developing economy we have to rely on uh, such resources and nuclear energy is the uh, is environmentally the most benign as compared to the other uh, forms or the options of energy thank you so much sir and with the core message that national development and national security go hand in hand for a sustainable development of the country and technology is part so thank you so much sir for sparing your precious time and sharing your profound thoughts and knowledge and we hope that we got a uh, uh, we learn a lot from your lecture and we hope that students also learn uh, had a great experience now we have we are honored to have honorable president uh, of nasi professor ajay ghatak sir who made immense contribution to the uh, many activities of nasi and he has been instrumental uh, towards executing so many programs although professor ghatak sir needs no introduction but uh, It's our duty to introduce him formally. He is a renowned physicist and currently the president of the National Academy of Sciences, uh, Sciences India. He has written over 170 research papers and more than 20 books. His undergraduate textbook on optics has been translated to Chinese and Persian, and his monograph on inhomogeneous optical wave guides, which has been co-authored with Professor Soda, has been translated to Chinese and Russian. He was a elected fellow of the Optical Society of America for distinguished service to optics education and for his contribution to understanding of propagation characteristics of radiant index media, fibers, and integrated optical devices. He is a recipient of several prestigious awards and honors, including the Optical Society Sang Soo Lee Award for his role in the development of fiber optics. There is a long list, and uh, I request you, sir, to please. Say, please say a few words and deliver your presidential remarks. Thank you. Professor, but you have to unmute. Yeah. You have to unmute. I'm not able to hear you. Can you hear me now? Oh. You have to unmute. You have to unmute. Sir, please unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay. Can you? Okay. Uh, uh, thank you, Archana. And uh, it was truly an inspiring talk by Professor Chitambaram, and it was really a privilege to hear him. But before I mention a few words about Professor Chitambaram's talk, I thought I should mention that the idea of having a 
lecture in memory of Professor Menon on his 93rd birthday was by Dr. Manju Sharma. And on behalf of Nasi, I would like to express my deep sense of gratitude to her for initiating this. And when we had the meeting to decide as to who should be the first speaker, and there was, it was unanimously felt that Mr. Chitambaram was the most appropriate person. And as we saw, as we heard a brilliant lecture by him, the, the choice of our speaker was so justified and he has done so much to the growth of the nation. And he has such a great perspective of the development of science and technology in our country. He mentioned in his talk that the industrial revolution that took place in Europe did not take place in India. This happened in the late 18th century. After Galileo and Newton, the industrial revolution took place in Europe. And this unfortunately did not happen in India. And it was only in 1817 that the first college was established, the Presidency College with Raja Ramon Rai, through pub generous public donations. And then the three universities came up at Bombay, Madras, and uh, Calcutta. And, uh, and then I always try to mention that what 18, 1869, and this was also mentioned by Professor Chitambaram, that uh, in 1869, the great visionary, Mahindra Lal Sarkar, said that, the, that we are still a poor nation. And in order to prove, to remove the property, we must have science and technology, original research in science and technology. And that, that is the only way we can get rid of the freedom of, of poverty. Today, even after 75 years of independence, we have 30% of the people still under the poverty line. And that is a staggering 400 million people. And how to remove this poverty? And therefore, it is only through education, science, and technology. And as Professor Chidambaram very rightly mentioned in one of his slides, that we need loud leaders. And that is the need of today. Because we are fortunate, very fortunate in India to have outstanding students, very motivated students. They just require leaders who can create a revolution. And as Professor Chitambaram mentioned, technology is power. And India is also recognized because of the efforts of people like Professor Benan, Professor Chitambaram, and many others, a global technology leader. Today, we must remember people like Humi Bhabha, who created a series of institutions. People like Professor Meghnath Saha, Professor Vikram Sarabhai, Professor Satish Dhawan, S.S. Bhatnagar. And they created tremendously large number of institutions where research and development are taking place. And it is because of these establishment of great institutions and availability of outstanding students that we can claim ourselves to play a small role being a global technology leader. I felt so proud to hear that from Professor Chitambaram that that they that the so many so many devices have been built for the large hadron collider by ipr i had known about that but it was so nice to see those slides and it made me feel very proud and it made me realize that that india can do anything because we are very fortunate once again to have a large number of students who are truly outstanding and so therefore, what we require today are great leaders. And, uh, and of course, support from the government, which we have. So before I end, I pay my deep respects enough. The large amount of things have been mentioned about Professor Menon, which is true that today, what, whatever little we have been able to achieve in, the, in our academy is all because of course, the foundation was laid by Professor Meghnath Saha. Many other people also contributed to the growth of the academy. But the but the but a very major contribution was made by Professor Menon, to which we all associated with the academy 
are extremely grateful to. And, and, and therefore, I once again thank Dr. Manju Sharma for initiating this. this we, we will have this as an annual event that on 28th of August, whether it is a Saturday or a Sunday or a Monday or a Raksha Bandhan, we will have our memorial lecture. And we have made it a brilliant start today by having Professor Chidambaram uh, as the first speaker of the series. I would like to thank all at the Academy headquarters for all the help that they provided and uh, to Dr. Manju Sharma and our profuse thanks to Professor Chitambaram for this wonderful lecture, which is full of inspiration and which makes us proud and also motivates us to contribute more in the coming years. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for your profound thoughts and uh, making a very uh, relevant address and with the message that in a country like India, it is the need of the hour to have such leaders who could make revolutionary changes in the society for the science and technology to develop. Thank you so much for sharing your, sharing your time. Now it's time to felicitate our distinguished speaker. And now I would like to request Dr. Santosh Sitraji, the Assistant Executive Secretary of NASI, to please do the honors. Thank you, Arjuna ji. Uh, before felicitation, as before felicitation, uh, as uh, told by Madam and we want that uh, we are celebrating the 93rd birthday of Professor Menon sir also. And Madam has shown us the festive of uh, Professor Menon sir as a compile of the all the memories of his. Uh, colleagues and uh, scholars. So there are, we have took uh, some photographs of uh, compiled photographs of in the memories of the festival. And uh, with the due permission of Madam and the President, sir, I want to share his here or some of the photographs, sir. Uh, the, this first trip was also the idea was mooted by Honorable Madam Manu Sharma, Madam, as uh, she has uh, in the tribute of Professor Menon, sir. Madam had made a lot of uh, things in uh, initiated in the academy as the Professor M G K Menon, sir, Memorial Award, M G K Menon, sir, Lecture Award, as well as this series were also conceived and developed by uh, Madam Manju Sharma ji. So here we have uh, some without uh, explaining anything. Uh, uh, pictures are already self depicted, self explained.
and this health strip was also given to the honorable prime minister thank you thank you very much So, as the Professor Menon sir was the, on, uh, apart from the president and the many um, chairman of the many committees in the, with the NASI, he was also the chairperson of the NASI new initiatives with the academy, and he has transformed this academy in the in the all so many dimensions in the science and technology as well as the science and society field. Uh, after that, after his uh, honourable Madam Manju Sharma has took over the charge of NASI new initiatives and. Madam is also making our academy and transforming the academy in the same way. And she has also initiated this so many programs, and this program was also conceived and developed by Madam. She has promoted this idea, and we are very much thankful to Madam Manju Sharma. So, uh, the felicitation part is uh, from the online, could not be possible in a way, grand way. What we have, we do in, we can, uh, we could do in a, some. Different way uh, due to this pandemic, so it could not be possible here. But uh, just for paying our tribute to so we are our heartfelt gratitude and thanks to the distinguished speaker, the first. Speaker of this series, lecture series, Padma Vibhushan Professor R. Chitambaram sir, who is the former chairman, Atomic Energy Commission, Government of India, and presently DAE Humi Baba Chair Professor, DRC Mumbai. Uh, on behalf of this academy and our all the president, past president, president who are here, we want to felicitate Professor Chitambaram sir. Through online, we could have uh, managed it in very grand way, uh, hopefully in future also, uh, but presently. We can only uh, express our gratitude and thanks to Chitambaram sir. And we also request to all the present audience and staff of this Nazi headquarters that we, we would like to facilitate you. We also express our heartfelt gratitude to the Professor Ajay Ghatak sir, the president of our academy, and the Professor Manju Sharma madam, always and Professor Paranjit Parana madam, general secretary of our Nazi and Professor Satyav sir, general secretary headquarters of Nazi. He is also with us. And all of us, we want to felicitate you, sir. But uh, here, to the online mode, we can't say more than this. We can't do more than this. So we are very much thankful for the special thanks and the vote of thanks. We also proceed for further proceedings. I request to Arjuna ji to kindly proceed for further proceedings. Thank you, Dr. Santoshi. Now it's time to express gratitude to all who have contributed to the successful organization of this lecture. I now request Honorable Professor Satyadev sir to please support a vote of thanks. Professor Satyadev sir is an eminent professor, emeritus professor at HRI Ilhabad. He is the General Secretary of the NASI headquarters in Ilhabad. He is the NASI senior scientist and former Vice Chancellor of APS University, Riva and RD University, Jabalpur. Recipient of many awards, including Indian Science Congress Gold Medal and uh, uh, Distinguished Service Award by the Mathematical Association of India for his outstanding contributions to the power of teaching and research in mathematics. Over to you, sir. Professor Satyadev, sir. Not here, is poor actually. <clears throat> we can't hear you. So. Uh, I think there is some problem in the network at Professor Joseph yes. and. Uh, may I request then 
uh, with the due permission of our honorable president the uh, uh, senior vice president professor anurag sharma ji to please express vote of thanks and that's a very good idea very good idea good afternoon uh, <clears throat> i would like to ex express vote of thanks to to professor chidambaram for a wonderful talk uh, and having agreed to give this talk and uh, we all enjoyed and uh, as professor gatak said earlier it was really inspiring talk uh, we also would like to thank uh, professor uh, gatak uh, who is the president uh, and he's his present here and his gracious presence is also thankfully acknowledged professor manju sharma and professor klesh tyagi professor uh, ashok mishra and other participant other uh, uh, past presidents uh, would like to thank all of them for being part of this and uh, also the other uh, fellows who have joined and there's we also like to thank uh, a large number of par uh, participants who are uh, who have listened to this talk uh, through the video uh, on youtube and uh, i'm sure they have all enjoyed and have got inspired by this so thank you all and uh, as uh, i think uh, dr manju sharma said we should all rise for the national anthem Neeraj, you can organize that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Anurag. We'll start the national anthem just just now. Thank you, everybody. पंजाब सिंध गुजरात मराठा द्राविड उत्कल बंगा विंध्य हिमाचल यमुना गंगा उच्चल जलद तरंगा तव शुभ नाम गागे तव शुभ आशीष मागे गाहे तब जय गाधा जन गण मंगल दायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे जय हे जय हे जय 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 हे थैंक यू सर जय हिंद थैंक यू थैंक यू जय हिंद with due permission of our honorable president we are closing this session thank you everybody and namaskar pranam to everyone pranam to everybody my side out thank you for all the organization uh, thank you everyone